Court trials are usually extremely boring and take a very long time to resolve. They can either be slow enough to put those in the gallery to sleep, or sicken and shock them after hearing the horrific acts of the accused. But they aren't often funny. However, there is a magical place called America where they have things like burgers and human rights, but they also have this amazing thing where you can file lawsuits against anyone for any number of absolutely stupid reasons. So let's talk about some dumb court cases. Please leave a like and a comment on this video because it really helps me in the algorithm. <coughs> but before we get started, this video is brought to you by Raycon. With Raycon earbuds you can instantly improve your listening experience with stunning quality at half the price of other premium audio brands. And you can customise it however you like. This year, Raycon is celebrating its 6 year anniversary with a sale. Raycon has grown a lot over the past year with the introduction of Raycon Home and Raycon PowerTech, so there is a lot to celebrate. The new everyday earbuds are better than ever with an aesthetic rubber look in multiple colours and a feel that is both sleek and discreet, as well as including multiple optimised gel tips to provide that perfect fit for all day maximum comfort, high quality sound and security regardless of the shape or size of your ears. Raycon everyday earbuds are more versatile than ever with a built-in mic that allows you to take calls with the push of a button. They are also compatible with assistants such as Siri and Alexa and include three easy to toggle audio profiles for you to customise to your liking. There is also a noise isolation and awareness mode for audio transparency when you need it. Raycons also offer 8 hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life. People like them so much that Raycon has gained a massive 78,000 5 star reviews on their site. I use my Raycons every day while travelling or just for a bit of background noise while I'm doing some work. I use awareness mode which often allows me to hear my music without drowning out my surroundings which is essential for work. As I mentioned earlier, Raycon is now 6 years old and they would like to celebrate and thank everyone for their support by offering 20 to 40% off site wide. So if you want to get some top tier earbuds and also support the channel, click the link in the description down below or go to buyraycon.com slash dankula and use code birthday to get a huge deal off of your order. To start us off, Gloria Sykes had moved to San Francisco to become a dance instructor and in only two weeks of living there, she had a life-changing incident. She claimed that she was a God-fearing woman and lived an extremely moral lifestyle. And to get around town, she would use the famous San Francisco cable cars. One day, while travelling on Chestnut Street, the cable car had actually lost its grip on the cable, and since it was moving uphill, it quickly started to roll backwards. People were panicking and started jumping off into the street, until eventually the automatic braking system kicked in. This caused Gloria to fall forward and hit her head on one of the poles inside the cable car. Now, she probably at this point had a case for damages or injury, but she thought that she wasn't really that badly hurt, so she decided to just leave it and continue on with her day. That was until six years later when she decided to sue the city of San Francisco. Not because she had changed her mind on the damages, but because she believed that this bump to the head that she took during the incident had turned her into a nymphomaniac. Gloria was a very religious woman, but since this bump to the head, she was cock, 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 non-fucking stop. And she was so ashamed that she had become a harlot right out of Sodom and Gomorrah. The amount that she wanted in court was $500,000 in damages because, in her words, she now had 
an insatiable desire for intercourse. She claimed that it was so bad that she only had to look a man in the eye and she would be distracted by thoughts of getting pumped. The media, however, dragged her through the mud, believing that she was just a whore. Though she did get the last laugh because in the end she was awarded $50,000 by the court. It was decided that after hitting her head, it had triggered PTSD in her, which then led to her promiscuity. She wasn't very happy with the outcome of the case despite getting so much money, but records show that she lived a relatively happy and cock-filled life afterwards. And here we all were thinking that a bonk to the head actually stopped people from being horny. It turns out that it may actually do the opposite. So, Hi. Wait a minute. This next case has a little bit of backstory. Jesse Dimmick was a suspect wanted for questioning regarding the murder of a man in a Colorado motel. So Jesse had to be very careful about being spotted by the cops, so in order to help himself stay anonymous, he moved through different states using different names, likely committing more crimes as he went, before eventually ending up in Topeka, Kansas. In September of 2009, Jesse broke into the home of newlyweds Jared and Lindsay Rowley. His explanation was that he hadn't broken in, he was being chased and he feared for his life, so he forced entry into the house to hide from his pursuers. What he left out was that the people chasing him were the police. Though, if it was female police officers chasing him, then, then the man's got a point. Jesse claimed that he had made a deal with the couple for them to hide him. In return, he said that he would offer them money, though it was never actually specified how much he would give them. And in Jesse's mind, this was a legally binding verbal contract. Both Jared and Lindsay were absolutely terrified of what Jesse might do, since he had a knife with him and they suspected that he might also have a gun. But they kept their cool, they fed him, and they even watched movies with him. Until Jesse, the guy that had just broken into someone's home and taken them hostage, essentially, fell asleep. The poor kidnapper and murder suspect was all tuckered out. The couple took this opportunity to escape, luckily with no harm done to them. Jesse had a surprise wake-up call when the police showed up to arrest him, though he didn't go easily and he ended up getting shot and was sent to hospital. Jared and Lindsay filed a $75,000 lawsuit against Jesse for intruding and causing emotional distress during the kidnap. Jesse, however, filed a countersuit, saying that he wanted $235,000 due to a breach of contract and to pay for his hospital bills after getting shot. So, not only had he broken into their house and kidnapped them, the kidnapper now wanted to sue his hostages for his own actions. His lawsuit... Failed. I'm, I'm sure you'll all be very shocked to hear. But not because a judge just instantly threw it out because of how stupid it was. But because the court actually got Jesse on a technicality. He didn't specify the exact amount of money that he would pay them in the deal, which is required for something to be considered a verbal contract. And even if it was a verbal contract, it was made under duress because... He had a fucking knife. Jesse was convicted in May of 2010 and he was handed a sentence of 10 years and 11 months for four felonies, two of which were kidnapping. He also was being charged with murder after being transferred to a Colorado jail, but it seems that case is still ongoing. This next case involves some terrified and confused employees of a bank in 1995, because a guy armed with a pistol came in to rob the bank. The robber's name was Klaus Schmidt, and during the theft, the staff started to notice that he was acting very strangely. When the staff asked him if he wanted the money to be bagged, he responded by shouting, 
you're damn right it's a real gun, which everyone found a little bit confusing. Thinking that this was a sign that he was psychotic and fearing for their lives, the staff did exactly as he asked. Until they noticed that Schmidt wasn't responding properly to any audio cues. They then realised that this man robbing their bank was completely deaf. The employees then realised that even though the bank didn't have a silent alarm, they could trigger it anyway. Because how the fuck was he going to know? So they triggered the alarm, which was piercingly loud and alerted the entire local area that the bank was being robbed. But, hilariously, Schmidt had no idea. He just continued shouting threats like, I am a trained killer, I am a trained killer, while not having any idea that the cops were now on their way. The police showed up, and finding a negotiator who knew sign language would have been a huge bother. But, luckily, they didn't need one. Since the guy was completely deaf, the cops literally just snuck up on him. <laughs> And jumped him because, because, because he couldn't hear them coming. He was taken to the ground and was immediately arrested. Schmidt then filed a lawsuit against the bank and the police for ableism, claiming that they took advantage of him being deaf to thwart his plans. You were robbing a fucking bank, mate. The case was thrown out. Next up, Emil Rattleband, age 69, wanted to legally change his birth date by 20 years to avoid discrimination due to his age. His doctor had told him that his biological age was around 42 years. Emil said that we live in a time where you can change your name and change your gender, why can't I decide my own age? Though, when he took it to court, they disagreed since there was no legal basis to make such a change like that, and also many laws are based on someone's age. He was then told that he has the freedom to feel 20 years younger and to act that way if he so chooses. But his age would legally remain the same. I think that's a very sensible position. For many things. You would think that that would be over and done with, but after comparing himself to transgender people, he really kicked the hornet's nest. He was invited on shows to apparently talk about his case regarding his age, but all of that was really just a smokescreen to get him into an argument with transgender activists. I mean, you don't really need a smokescreen for that. That shit is literally the easiest thing in the world. Simply exist and be white and straight. That's all you need. Want to make a trans person angry? Exist. <laughs> In another case, a federal jury awarded Jeffrey Klein and Brett Birdwell millions of dollars for being injured while trespassing. Klein had suffered burns that covered 75% of his body and Birdwell 12% of his body. In 2002, the two guys were skateboarding and decided to get into some shenanigans by trespassing on a rail track and climbing on top of a parked boxcar so that they could get a nice view of the city. Seems like the kind of thing that teenagers would get up to and if the events that followed hadn't happened, they may have looked back on this as a nice, fond, wholesome memory. But, and I am sure every single one of you figured out exactly where this story was going, Klein touched an exposed wire, and this wire sent 12,500 volts of electricity through his body, which actually set his clothes on fire. His friend Birdwell then suffered burns himself, trying to put the flames out on his friend's body. During the trial in 2006, it was deemed that the company that owned the track, Amtrak and Norfolk Southern Corporation, hadn't put up enough signs warning of the danger, and the ages of the teens were taken into account since they were both 17 at the time. The money awarded in the case was for medical costs, pain and suffering, and loss of life pleasures. The jury had awarded Klein and Birdwell $4,375,000 in punitive damages against Amtrak and $1,875,000 in punitive damages against Norfolk Southern. 
which is an amazing payday if you didn't have to live the rest of your life as the burned man. However, let's acknowledge that both of these teenagers were absolute fucking morons. We can't expect signs to do all the work. Now for a case that all of you have heard of. Stella Liebeck ordered a coffee from a McDonald's drive through window and accidentally spilled it onto her lap while her grandson was driving. This might seem like something that unfortunately happens to everyone, except in this case, the coffee was overheated and meant that Stella had to be rushed to hospital. She spent eight days in there to undergo skin grafting. Yes, it was that bad. You can find actual pictures of it online, but I can't show them here, and to be honest, I don't think I want to. That day, Stella had worn cotton trousers, which had absorbed the scalding hot coffee and basically melted them to her skin, which led to her receiving third-degree burns on around 6% of her body. She lost a fair amount of weight while she was in the hospital, and she needed help for a few weeks from her daughter, and she was now permanently disfigured, and she was also disabled for two years after the incident. Initially, Stella asked McDonald's for $20,000 to cover her medical bill and also her daughter's lost income from the time she had to take off work to take care of her mother, which you would think would be perfectly reasonable. But, as you would expect from any heartless corporation, they refused her settlement and offered her a measly $800. So, the only option then was to take them to court. Stella's lawyer explained to the court that the coffee was far too hot at 190 degrees Fahrenheit or 88 degrees Celsius. So instead of the $800 that they offered her or the $20,000 that Stella was looking for, the court awarded her $160,000 in compensatory damages to cover her medical expenses and $2.7 million in punitive damages. The equivalent of two whole days of McDonald's coffee sales. Which I'm sure left a very sour taste in their mouth, almost as bad as their coffee. Who the fuck is still buying coffee from McDonald's? But it seems that there was a little bit of fuckery in regards to this case. As Stella is very often derided and mocked for being so stupid because of course coffee is hot. And this particular case is very often used as an example of America's crazy I'm gonna sue you culture. And the entire thing paints Stella as a stupid litigious person who gained a lot of money from her own stupidity. However, the reason that most people think that about this particular case is because allegedly, allegedly, McDonald's did a little bit of PR and media wizardry to make it seem that way so that Stella would be demonised and painted as an idiot to make McDonald's look like they weren't at fault. When they did make the coffee way too hot. In 2006, a man from Portland, Oregon named Alan Heckard tried to sue Michael Jordan as well as Knight co-founder Phil Knight for promoting... Michael Jordan's face. The combined amount that he was looking to get in the trial was $832 million for personal injury, emotional pain, mental distress, and suffering. Now, you're probably thinking that Michael Jordan must have done something pretty serious to this poor man. Well, he seemed to think so. The reason for the lawsuit was because Alan Heckard looked an awful lot like Michael Jordan. And he became really sick of people mistaking him for Michael Jordan for the past 15 years, including his crazed fans. Apparently, people kept asking him if he was that guy from Space Jam. Alan said that he just wanted to be seen as himself, just like Jordan is seen as Jordan. They did have a resemblance since the guy shaved his head and had an earring just like Jordan, which probably wasn't helping his case. But a large flaw was that he was six whole inches shorter than the basketball player. He couldn't even get a lawyer to represent him, which says a lot, but Alan went ahead anyway, making the biggest legal mistake that anyone could make by representing himself. 
The case, as anyone would guess, went absolutely nowhere and Alan eventually dropped the lawsuit after possibly coming to his senses or he was just tired of everyone laughing at him for how ridiculous his case was. In 2009, a 20-year-old woman named Chelsea Hess decided to meet with some friends at Jock's Sports Grill in Bluffton, South Carolina. And despite not being 21, which is the legal drinking age in that state, she was served alcohol anyway. After hanging out, she left drunk at 1am and she made the big brain decision to drive home. And I'm sure that you will all be very shocked to hear that she lost control of her car, rolling it off the road. And of course, she wasn't wearing a seatbelt, so the impact of the crash meant that she was thrown out of the car and launched six metres. She sustained serious injuries that left her a paraplegic. But Chelsea refused to take any of the blame for her bad choices and instead decided that it was the fault of the sports grill because, after all, they had forced all of those drinks down her throat and then explicitly told her to drive home drunk without a seatbelt. Not only did she want to sue the sports grill, she also wanted to sue the South Carolina Department of Transportation for allegedly not properly maintaining the road shoulder that she had crashed on. The case ultimately didn't go anywhere. Now, another one that you've all probably heard of. Jan Feng from China saw his newborn daughter and he immediately thought to himself, Wow. That's a fucking ugly baby. <laughs> and he noticed that the baby didn't look like him or even his wife. So he suspected that his wife must have been cheating on him. Turns out the reason that the baby didn't look like them is because the wife admitted to having a lot of plastic surgery before they met, which is very common in Asian countries. However, Jan sued his wife on the grounds of entering into a marriage under false pretenses, saying that she had misled him with her looks. And he won the case. In fact, she was ordered to pay him over $120,000. In the West, this might have been a bit of a cell phone since they were married and their finances would have probably been combined. There is some debate over whether or not this story is fully real since getting accurate news out of China is pretty difficult and it may or may not have happened or it did kind of happen and the story has just been greatly embellished. A lesser known story is that of a 27 year old man from Michigan who had a fender bender with a guy in a pickup truck. He took the driver to court, not because of the accident or for any damages to his vehicle, but because he said that the man that had rear-ended him had turned him gay. I mean, I mean, maybe it works like that, I have absolutely no idea, but he claimed that after the accident, he just couldn't stop going to gay bars. And I think he was trying to blame a possible head injury from the accident for his new behaviour. You would think that he would have just been laughed out of the courtroom, but by some miracle, he was awarded $200,000. I mean, if you become gay after a guy rear-ends you, then I think it's because you liked it. Robert Lee Brock, while serving a 23-year sentence, sued himself for $5 million because he violated his own religious beliefs, became a drunk and got himself arrested. This sounds extremely stupid, but it was an attempted finesse. Turns out Brock was actually trying to be clever since he had no money while he was in jail. But he was a ward of the state, meaning that if he won against himself, the state would have to be the ones to pay the money out to himself. Clearly, he's an absolute mastermind, but the case was obviously seen as a mockery and was quickly dismissed. Another theory was that he was trying to make himself look cookie-boo and absolutely nuts so that he would be transferred to a psychiatric hospital, but he never got his transfer or his money. In fact, prison inmates very often start ridiculous lawsuits. Convicted murderer and rapist Lawrence Bittaker tried to sue the prison as he was absolutely distraught 
after being served a soggy sandwich and a broken cookie at San Quentin Prison. In New York at Sing Sing Prison, inmate Joseph Gonzalez said that he had suffered insomnia and migraines after receiving a defective haircut. Kenneth Parker of Nevada State Prison was unhappy that instead of receiving two jars of chunky peanut butter, one of them was smooth. These kinds of stupid lawsuits happen so often from prison inmates that the government actually plans to punish them if their case is deemed frivolous. Of course, they can't legally, from a whole human rights standpoint, actually prevent them from filing a lawsuit, but average citizens are usually financially sanctioned if they file dumb cases. But prisoners, that doesn't really affect them since they're all poor anyway. So, if the lawsuit is some frivolous bullshit, the government plans to just add more time onto the prisoner's sentences. In 2015, Jennifer Connell attended the birthday party of her eight-year-old nephew, Sean Tala. On arrival, her nephew jumped off his bike and ran towards her, which ended in a rugby tackle. As they both fell to the ground, Jennifer landed on her arm and broke her wrist. After a few years of trying to get money from her insurance company to pay her medical bills, they offered her one dollar, which honestly is kind of a joke. But not as funny as her next move. She would sue her now 12-year-old nephew for $127,000. That's a lot of paper rounds. In court, she said that her injuries were caused by carelessness and negligence, also adding that a reasonable eight-year-old should have known better. A reasonable eight-year-old. A lot of you probably have kids. Some of you probably have an eight-year-old right now. Look me in the eye and tell me that any eight-year-old is fucking reasonable. The court, of course, deemed Sean innocent and she lost the case. When questioned about it later, she claimed that it was just an insurance formality because they wouldn't pay out, which to me kind of seems like an attempt at covering up her own embarrassment. Some cases are a bit too short, but still deserve a mention. A man sued the previous owner of his house because he claimed it was haunted. A surfer sued another surfer for stealing his wave, claiming it was for his pain and suffering. A man sued a doctor for giving him a hairy hand because the skin graft was taken from his chest. A guy sued Red Bull because it didn't actually give him wings. There are just... So many wild court stories, and many are just rumours or urban legends, but occasionally you hear a story that sounds so ridiculous that it just has to be fake, and then you find out that it's completely real. God bless America. It's Count Dankula on YouTube! Everybody subscribe!